Okay, hi everyone and welcome to CG Buildup. And today we're going to talk about the curve topology nodes front and blender. And to be more specific, we're going to talk about the points of curve, a mesh topology node that a curve topology node that is found inside Blender. So first of all, I'm just going to select the camera and the lamp and just delete it and click on the cube, go to the geometry node workspace, click on the new and reduce this spreadsheet window okay something like that so i'm just going to delete actually i'm just going to delete the group input and i'm just going to add in a curve line okay and i'm just going to connect this curve into the group output and i'm going to change the start position to be negative one in the x and the end position to be instead of one in the z it's going to be one in the x okay something like that and for my preferences i'm just going to mute the 3d cursor um and the origins okay to get something more like this afterwards i'm just going to duplicate this uh, this spline that i have something like that and i'm going to resample this spline to something like 15 points okay then i'm going to take the amount to two uh maybe maybe three i guess then i'm going to set the position of each spline in in the z okay so by connecting a combine xyz and then the z i'm just going to combine in i'm just going to connect it to the factor in the noise okay and we get something like that it might be different depending on your pc and the noise texture that you added and to make this equal um yes in the range of zero to one just going to subtract it by 0 0.5 to something like that actually it might be lower than zero lower than zero but that's not actually the point then we have three three splines here but it looks as if we're seeing one but it's actually because of this vector here is the same for each kind of the same for each spline in its flow so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to connect in a math node set to add then connect the position and here I'm just going to connect in uh, an interpolate domain, but if you are using high versions, it's called evaluate domain. And here I'm going to connect the index and I'm going to set it to be for splines. And now we have three splines, each of a unique, the unique in its deformation with the, with this noise texture. You can change it to 4D and this w can act like a seed okay and now we have them overlapping okay the segments of these splines are overlapping so what we want to do is that so that they don't overlap we can take advantage of this uh duplicate index and connecting a math node set to multiply add this one here then Maybe let's take these ones to the bottom, grab it there, and connect this value to the add end and the value from the multiply add to the z instead. Now we can see them that they are not overlapping and I can just increase the number and they won't be overlapping. But this is not, sure, not actually what I want. I want them to be close to each, one, to each other as much as possible, but they shouldn't be overlapping, okay? I don't want like this whole gap over here that is found like it's so huge okay between each spline I want to reduce this as much as possible and to do that actually it's very simple especially using curved topology nodes we need to find the maximum position in the z for each for each spline each spline that I'm having right here each for example I need to find um in each spline that I'm having, which point has the maximum Z position, like this one here, and which one has the lowest Z position, like this one here in this spline. Same for this one, this point over here, 
seems to be having the maximum z and this one seems to have be having the, the minimum low it's different from each spline because of this noise texture that's how it just gives unique factor to each point depending on the vector information from here so how are we going to do that is simply by using the curved topology nodes okay so i'm just going to rub here and specifically we're going to use points of curve okay we're going to take advantage of something called the weights and the sort index okay so i'm just going to add in a point of curve something like this then in the weights i'm going to connect in a separate xyz the z component and in the vector i'm just going to simply connect the position so what's going to happen right now okay so something that you have to do also in this curve index um you have to connect the index of what you we are you actually we actually want for some reason i'm not sure it has a default value but i'm just going to connect in an interpolate domain or you can use an evaluate evaluate domain for higher higher versions and connect its spline and i'm going to connect the spline index okay so what is this not going to do right now okay if i set it in this way see there is this weights and this sort index and there is the curve index as well in this node they actually work together to give out a value in this point index okay so when when we keep it the ways to be um dependent on the z position of each point in a single spline from this interpret domain in a single spline um it's going to look which point has the highest value meaning right like, meaning that for example in this spline here okay it's going to arrange the sort index based on the z position and based on this z position here meaning that the one which has the highest will have the highest sort index and the one which has the minimum z will have the lowest index which is zero okay and the the maximum the maximum sort index will depend on the number of points in that spline that, um, that i selected here so when it's set to zero it means that it's going to select it's going to select a point that has the lowest spline the lowest z position in that spline okay simple like that then the when it when it's set to a very high value okay maybe like the number for example in one spline we set it, it so that it has 15 points meaning that since the sort index has from zero the one with the maximum will have 14 points okay but we're going to make it procedure not actually typing in 14. so what i'm going to do right now i'm just going to press shift control d something like that and leave the same same settings here but this total now will act as the number of point in that spline okay from this setup here so i'm just going to connect in this i'm going to connect a math node set to subtract and i'm just going to subtract the value of one meaning that it's going to look at the number of points from this total and subtract one meaning that if it was 15 to be 14 which is which is the correct number for the maximum and i'm going to connect this value into the sort index simply like that so in short this node now tells gives the point it gives the index of the point which has the which has the minimum z okay while well, this point to curve because of the total the total number of points minus the number of points found in a spline it's going to give out the index it's going to give out the index of the point that has the maximum z position simply like that so let me just rub these annotations and hopefully that was understood now we can just use a fill that index okay fill that index at every point or you can use a 
an evaluate domain so i'm going to press shift control d and i'm going to connect this point index to the value and to point index to the index and this z yeah it's already connected because i uh, duplicated with reconnect okay then what next i'm going to do this set position since this is the lowest value so i'm going to set the position so that in each plane the point that is going to be in the lowest part is going to be the one that has the minimum that is it's going to now have a position of zero by taking this value here and i'm going to subtract i mean actually i'm going to multiply by negative one simply like that and i'm just going to connect in a combine xyz and take that value into the z then i'm going to connect into the offset like that simply as you can see now in each point in each spline actually the point that has the minimum position has a position of zero okay simply like that then i'm going to take the difference between the maximum from this point index and i'm going to subtract from this one which has the minimum value then i'm going to use an accumulate field node and actually i'm going to set this to spline okay then i'm going to connect the trailing simply what's going to be done here is just it's like a running sum okay um among splines if i set it to splines so i'm just going to add it to this value here yeah and connect to the z and simply like that they are much closer to each other compared to before if you can mute you can clearly see that the space is reduced they are more tightly packed okay it seems here as if they are intersecting but yeah they are actually in sort of intersecting but at a very close level okay and if i want to reduce that i can simply um uh, add in a math another math node and i'm going to maybe multiply um by the index of these planes by duplicating this one here and taking it there and reduce it again to something like 0.01 something that now if i zoom in really much you can see there is that tiny gap here okay to inf to prevent complete um intersection and i the good part it's all procedure i can increase the points and you can see that they are very closely tightly packed in so in sort of okay and i can mute this you can see the original was having so much spaces and the, the after one very few spaces and that's was really brought together mainly due to the points to curve this curved polynodes i'm looking forward to doing tutorials on other curved polynodes like the offset index in the near future so i hope this was helpful to someone and i hope you got to understand the point of curve better now um thank you for watching and see you next time